Hey everyone, the M42 lens mount died a long time ago. Long live M42. All right, uh, it's, you can probably tell because I'm wearing the same clothes as the last video. I'm filming these back to back, so I'm still drinking the Queen Bean uh, Panama Geisha. And it's still good. All right. So, this is the TT Artisan 100mm f2.8 lens they are calling the Bubble Bokeh lens. Real quickly as an aside, I, I'm saying this as someone who has a bachelor's and a master's degree in English. I have a little bit of authority on this. Bokeh is the stupidest word in photography. It is such a dumb word. Um, anyway, back to the lens. So TT Artisan released this the 100mm 2.8. It's a Cook triplet, which is a fascinating design, by the way. The Cook triplet is a really interesting lens design. It's three elements. And basically, when, when it was designed originally in 1893, the design concept behind it was to take two doublets, each with a, like, a biconvex, uh, which is convex on each side, concave plano, uh, concave on one side, flat on the other, and, and then a symmetrical cup, uh, couplet, slap them together and turn that, those two plano concaves into a single biconcave and then airspace them. And, make, and that allows you to do a few things. You can make them asymmetrical, which most triplets are. And that airspacing also allows different, um, different surface profiles for the, the elements that, that face each other. Uh, the surfaces that face, face each other, so you can correct aberrations in a different way, and it allows a lens designer to use some very simple optical formulae to correct for the five zidal aber aberrations. Uh, don't ask me what they are right now. They, they're coma, spherical aberration, field curvature, I'm forgetting the other two. Um, anyway, so 1893, the Cook triplets designed. That's that's what this is. This is a, a, ver, uh, a modern day Cook triplet. And so it's a 100 millimeter lens and, and TT Artisan did something very clever with this. They made it exclusively an M42 lens. This is a great idea. There's no claim on the M42 lens mount. Like anybody could make an M42 lens, right? So um, it's ancient technology. All you have to do is know the register distance of 45.46 millimeters, I think, off the top of my head. If I'm wrong, someone will correct me. Um, that's the surface of this flange to the film plane, how long that's got to be. And it should be really simple to get right. It should be very simple to get right. Okay, so... Why do they call this the bubble bokeh lens? Because it gives you an out of focus characteristic in certain situations that creates a soap bubble look. That's what people call it. Basically, here are a few sample images so you can see what it looks like. And it, it's a, an out of focus area, area characteristic where the source point lights have a bright periphery ring around them. That bright periphery ring is simply a a flaw. Well, yeah, it's a flaw because it's not, it's an imperfection in the way that the optical system works, which bundles a greater proportion of the light ray, rays on the outside perimeter of the out of focus points. This is called overcorrected, overcorrected spherical aberration. Undercorrected, you might assume then would be exactly the opposite, and you are correct if your out of focus areas are brighter at the center and dimmer at the outside then you have it. I think I've gotten those correct. I think I, I don't think I switched those around. So, so um, anyway, undercorrected means you have a brighter center point and dimmer, like a transition to darkness on the outside. In general, the latter makes a more pleasing out of focus area because the out of focus points, which are infinite on the, you know, theoretically, um, transition together more smoothly. The out-of-focus areas from a lens like this, which create a bright perimeter around each, each circle of confusion, it's more jittery, it's less visually pleasing, unless 
you have a solid background with intentionally placed lights, and you're going for that specific soap bubble effect in your images. So interestingly, with, with this lens, with all lenses that do this, one of the things that you have is that when you have the, the, um, the, the effect changes with your focus point. And I, I did a test on this. Here's a video showing what that looks like going wide open through the, um, through the, the, the focus range. So you can see how that, that effect changes as you focus. Um, but uh, it, it is basically means that this lens is a single purpose lens. It's a portrait lens. We know that because it's 100 millimeters. But it's designed to give you portrait photos with background with very specific background blurs. So I did take it out once, and, and, and I'll do my unboxing video with more sample footage and, and photos after I've taken it out a second time, because I like that. I, like, I want to do, do that to have it be a little bit more fair for the lens. Uh, one, one test is not enough to do a, any kind of review. Um, it, so uh, at any rate, I'll, I'll, I'll have that, but um, I do have some initial thoughts on this lens. Noting that I just said it's not fair to do this after one use. Um, image characteristic wide open is very soft, very glowy, has a lot of potential for portraits. Color, uh, contrast rather, is very flat on it, uh, shockingly flat, especially wide open. It does get better as you step down a bit. Sharpness also gets better as you step down. It focuses way past infinity. Like, when I took this out on, on Monday, I took a picture of Gray's and Tori's Peak with it, and uh, I was like, why does this look so, this cannot be that soft. And so I started focusing and everything snapped into focus, and I realized this lens focuses past infinity. Look, M42 is established knowledge. The register distance is known. The lens design of the Cook triplet in here is established knowledge. The nodal point on this would be very easy to calculate. The exact spacing of the elements would be very easy to calculate. It would be very easy to put all of that into a single cell and thread it into the lens and have all of those elements placed so that infinity focus on here is infinity focus in reality. The downside to having infinity focus not being correct is now we also know all of these very pretty uh, aperture scales on the bottom, completely inaccurate. Cannot be used reliably at all, period, end of story. So I went and I, I just said, you know what? It looks like there are three screws on the bottom here. I'll just take this off, reposition the, um, uh, figure out exactly. Oh, and the other thing that it does it doesn't line up with an M42 mount. Mounting this on my Pentax SV, for instance, uh, the infinity focus indicator points way off to the side. The, the threads on this aren't even lined up correctly. So I said, all right, well, I've got three screws here. I'm gonna take this off. What I'll do is I'll reposition it 90 degrees or however much I needed to reposition it. Yeah, and, uh, and then I'll, I'll figure out how much needs to be in there for it to reach infinity. I'll put in a shim. No big deal. Turns out this whole base here is part of this thing that's screwed in. So if I were to take this out and rotate it, which I could, it, it appears, my focus indicator would no longer properly align with the, the focus mark. Unbelievably disappointing. Just, yeah, very frustrating. Um, this just comes down to sloppy milling, because if this, if they knew, like, if they knew where they were going to put this, then all they would have to do is mill this, the, the threads accurately. So it's a distinct possibility that if you buy this, yours may line up per perfectly. My guess is that they mill this bottom point, attach it, and then paint this stuff on. Uh, or engrave it on, and some people will luck out and have this thing line up, and 
Some people it'll be upside down. That's my best guess. Um, then the other thing with this is you have a ton of room here in the barrel for focus. But you're only getting around about a third of the barrel of focus throw. So the minimum focus on this is marked as being three feet. Feels like it's a hair longer than that, maybe because this focus is past infinity a little bit. Um, it does feel like it's closer to four. At any rate, if this lens could focus down to say one foot, it would be immeasurably more useful just as a general use lens. Uh, it is a portrait lens for portrait use. This is like a fine for close focus point. But um, it would have been very, very nice if this had a closer focus point and if the throw on the focus was closer to the entire length of the barrel. That would really have been nice. Um, at any rate, milling, machining on this otherwise is really good. It handles beautifully. The focus is very smooth. The stops are, are, are detented. Uh, it's a, got steps and detents at half stops up until 11 and then 11, 16, and 22 are full. So, and it comes with, I love these by the way, I do love the screw-in lens caps and it comes with one of those. Just overall, very nicely made lens, but one of the things that we find time and time again with, with this class of third-party lenses is that the refinements that make them really absolutely stunning lenses aren't there. So they end up being good and usable lenses, but not stunning lenses that most people will say, I want to use this for the rest of my life, it's that good. So um, anyway, I'll do a, an unboxing video with more samples in the next few weeks, it's my goal, um, and there will be a full round glass review on this lens sometime probably late in 2024. So thanks everybody for watching, and I will see you in whatever video comes next.